We begin today the Gemara on the Tzadik Ches on the at the Mishnah. Zok the Elige Mishnah Chomesh Noshim, five different women, Shenis Avu Valdeseyim. Their children got mixed with one another. So we're talking over here about their sons. They got mixed with one another. So now these sons, they have no idea who their father and mother is. And besides the fact that these five women had these sons that were mixed, these women also had sons that were known, that everybody knew that it's their son. So now what happened? Higdilo ataruvais. So these sons that are it's unknown who they are, so they got older, Venosanoshim, they got married. Umesu, and then all of them passed away. So we have over here five different men that were married and that passed away without children, and we basically have no idea who is their brother. So there's the mitzvah of Yibum, and there are the known brothers, the, the known brothers, not known brothers, but there are the children that it's known who their parents are, but those children, who are they going to do Yibum for? They don't know which one of these five is their brother. So what do you do? So you do as follows. Arba Four of the brothers are going to go and do chalitza for one woman. So like this, you know that it's covered. I mean, these four, all of them did chalitza for this one woman. So one of them was the, was the brother. But there's a fifth one still. Now what happens with the fifth brother? And and then the one of them, the another was the fifth brother, he can now actually come ahead and do yibum. Why could he do Yibum? So Rashi explains, because if he, do, he does Yibum, Mimon of Shach, it's okay. If he's actually this person's brother that passed away, so then he's the one that has the mitzvah of Yibum. And if he's not the brother, one of the other four that did Chalitza was the brother. So Chalitza was done, and then he's just a person, Menashok, he's an unrelated person that can now just come and get married to this woman. Very simple. So that's what's done with the first Almana. And the same thing is repeated again with the second almana, the third almana, the fourth, and the fifth. You repeat the same thing again, as the missionary says. Now, who and Shloisha, so this one that just got married to the first <coughs> almana, and the other three brothers are going to do the same thing. It's going to come to the second wife, so that, that, that she's an almana now. They're going to do chalitza for her. So four of the brothers are going to do chalitza for her. And now, ve'echad miyavim. And another brother is going to go ahead and do Yibam and marry her. And Maman of Shach, the marriage is good. So what happens at the end when you're done with this whole thing? You, you repeat the same thing to the, to the, to the third uh, Almana and to the, all, all five, you do the same thing. So Nimtzu, it comes out, Arba Chalitzais, that for each one of these women, you're going to have four brothers that have to do Chalitza for them. And And in the end, each one of them is going to be married to one, one of the brothers. Because as long as you had chalitza by four brothers that was done in advance, so now one of the brothers could go and, and marry. Either he's doing his mitzvah of yibum, or he's just marrying a, a woman that was married to somebody that was unrelated to him. And that's fine. That's the eights over here. They end up, all of them being married. All of them end up being married to one of these uh, almanas, exactly. So the Gemara explains first the order of how this is done, of what it said here in the Mishnah. Now, the Gemara, the order of how this has to be done is that first the four brothers have to do Chalitza, and only afterwards could one brother go ahead and do Yibum. Aval Yivumi the other way around, let one just go do Yibum first. That's not possible. Why? The Kapaga Possibly he's not the right brother. And he's just marrying this woman without her receiving chalitza from the right brother. And he's just a person menashok marrying her. So first you have to have everyone do chalitza for her. Next thing that it said in the Mishnah, so the Gemara asks, Mai hu la'achas. What does the Mishnah mean when it says that this one that already was meyavim, one of the wives here, and then the other three brothers, they're going to do chalitza. So Rashi explains what the Gemara is basically asking is, the Mishnah seems to be saying that you have one brother that marries one almana, and then there's going to be another brother that's going to marry another almana. In the end, all brothers are going to be married. Now, theoretically, it's not necessarily not, not, not necessary to do that. You could have one person that's going to marry all five of them. As long as you have four that do chalitza to each one before this one brother wants to go and marry the, uh, one of the wives here, you could have one brother that marries all of them. Instead, the Mishnah seems to be saying what you should do is one brother will marry the first almana and then there'll be a second brother that will marry the second almana. Why do we do that? 
So the Gemara explains, you should not say, let one brother go and do the Yibum and marry all, all uh, five of these women. Ella rather, each brother should go and marry one of these women. Why? What's the advantage of doing it that way? Because then it could be that you're actually doing the mitzvah of Yibum, you're giving the possibility for each brother to have a chance that maybe he is doing the mitzvah of Yibum. So this is, if you think about it, this is actually a very interesting thing. You have two options over here. Either you could have one brother marry all five of these women, and then it's going to be 100% that that one brother did the mitzvah of Yibam. Amongst one of these five women, one of them was the wife of his brother. So for sure, one brother is doing the mitzvah of Yibam. But then for sure, the other four are not doing the mitzvah of Yibam. That's one option. Another option is, give all five brothers the opportunity that maybe they'll do the mitzvah of Yibam, but maybe nobody will. When you're giving the opportunity to all five, it could be nobody will. So what the Gemara is saying is that the Mishnah is teaching us it's better to give everybody a maybe opportunity to do the mitzvah than to give one of them the opportunity to for sure do the mitzvah. Interesting. Huh? Okay, but that, uh, as, as I, that's, that's what the Gemara is saying here. Okay, now the Gemara brings a b'raise that <laughs> takes the case of the Mishnah and adds a few details in the, in, in the case of the Mishnah. So the case of the Mishnah was when you had these five, these five brothers, and we don't know who these brothers, we don't know who they are. That's there, they are the Taruvis, the ones that were mixed, and there were the other brothers that were known who they are, and that was the whole case over here. But now there's another detail to this. So the Bach here adds, Tanura Bono. So we learned in a Braise. So first, the, the, what it says in the Braise, and then the Gemara will explain it. So the, the Lashon of the Braise is, Miktsasan Achin, if you have some that are brothers, or Miktsasan She'ein Achin, and some that are not brothers. The case of the Braise is talking about the case of the Mishnah. It's just adding details to the Mishnah. The Gemara will explain it. So first the Braise says, So ha'achin, those that are brothers, chaltzin. They have to do chalitza. V'she'ein achin, those that are not brothers, miyabmin. So they can do yibum. My comma, what, what is this Braise saying? It doesn't make any sense. The ones that are not brothers do yibum. How are, how are the ones that are not brothers do yibum? Then if they're not brothers, they don't have the mitzvah of yibum at all. So Omar Rav Safra, Rav Safra explains as follows. Hachi Omar, this is what this Braise was saying. son achin minav. Some of them over here that we have a suffix, who they are, have a brother that they share the same father. son achim minaim. But some of them, in addition to the fact that there's over here brothers that they have from the father, they also have a brother that they only share the same mother. Okay, so it's the same case of the Mishnah where we had, where you had over here the five, five that got mixed and another five brothers that are not mixed. But amongst those brothers that are mixed, the case over here is that you have one of them at least, maybe even two of them, have amongst those that are mixed a brother that they share the same father and also a brother that they share the same mother. Now how exactly this, this case plays out, how it's possible that there should be this case where you have a brother from the father and a brother of the mother, Rashi spells out how exactly that happens. But I'm not going to go into the details of how this happens. You can look in Rashi. Rashi explains it. But what's the point over here? Because there's one brother or maybe two brothers that have amongst this mixture a, a, a brother that's only a brother from the, from the mother and not a brother from the father. So therefore, so the halacha will be as, as follows. So Achen Mena'eim, those brothers that have in this mixture a brother of the mother, Chaltzen. They're going to have to do only Chalitza. They can't do Yibam. Why not? Because for them, there is no mitzvah. If, if you have a brother from the father, there's a mitzvah of Yibam. If you have a brother from the mother, there is no mitzvah of Yibam. Not only is there no mitzvah of Yibam, when you have a brother from the mother, there's actually a chi of Kodis of Eshesach. It's your, it's your brother's wife. The Isra of Kodesh of Eshes Ach is even when it's a brother from your mother. So therefore for that person or for those brothers that have in this mixture a brother from the mother, for them it's not an option to go ahead and do Yibum. What did we say in our Mishnah? That you're going to have four do chalitza, and then the fifth one will go and marry. Well, and the man of Shech, it's going to be okay. Either he's doing the mitzvah of Yibum, and if it's not the mitzvah of Yibum, so then he's just a person in Ashok that's marrying her. <coughs> but the issue over here is, if you have someone that it, he has in this mixture, a brother from the mother, so then there's another issue over here. You can't say man of Shech, that, may, that either it's, he's a person in Ashok, or he's doing the mitzvah of Yibum. It could be that he's marrying, his brother's wife, which is only a brother from the mother, and there is no mitzvah of Yibam. There's just the Issa Kodesh of, of Eish Yisach. So therefore for him, the only thing that he could do is Chalitza. 
So that's what the Braisa meant when it said that those that are the brothers, meaning brothers from the mother, could only do chalitza. And those that are brothers from the father, so that goes back to the halacha that it said in the Mishnah. So miyavmin, they can do yibum because miman of shach. Either they have the mitzvah of yibum, and if they don't have the mitzvah of yibum, so then it's just a person from the street. It's, it's not their brother bechlal. Again, going back to the case of the Mishnah, so where there's this mixture, so miktsasan kainim, some of them are kainim, or miktsasan sheinim kainim, and some of the brothers here are not kainim. So what's the halacha? So over here again, you're not going to be able to say exactly what it said in the Mishnah. So kainim, those that are kainim, chalitza. They could do only chalitza. You can't say that if in this mixture there's a kain, that this kain is allowed to marry. Because the halacha of a kain is, a kain is not allowed to marry a chalitza. So if the other brothers are doing chalitza, how could he come afterwards and marry? So he could only do chalitza. She'en a kain, and those brothers that are mixed in over here, that are not kain, and miyavmin. So they can do like it said in the Mishnah. They'll go and marry one of these wives, and the man of shech, it's okay. Now what say if miktsasan kainim or miktsasan achim eneim? Some of them are kainim and some of them are mo- uh, brothers that share the same mother. So then elu ve'elu chalitzen ve'leim miyavmin. So then the kainim could only do chalitza and not yibum. They can't marry someone that's a chalutza. And also the brother that has a brother that shares the same mother can't do chalitza because there's no mitzvah of yibum if you're a brother that shares the same mother and you don't share the same father. So now once we're talking about this kind of case where there's mixtures and there's this confusion here of the identity of the people, so it brings a braise that also talks about other interesting cases where there's a mixture of uh, the identities. So yes, there's a case where a person is going to have to do chalitza for his mother because of a suffix, which is an unusual thing. Usually there's no chalitza for a mother. And la chayisa misafik. You do chalitza for a sister because of a suffix and libita misafik. And also a person sometimes would have to do chalitza for his daughter because of a suffix. So what are these cases? So, so the Gemara spells out how this happens. Ketzat, so how could this be? So first regarding the case of doing chalitza for a mother. Imai v'isha cheres. So you have your mother and another woman. V'lehan shnei scharim. And they have two sons. And those sons are known. It's known whose sons is whose son. Now, then the Chazr v'yaldu shnei scharim b'machba, then they gave birth again to two sons in a, high, in, a, in a hidden place, meaning in a dark place. And what happened? These two new sons that got, were born now were confused. Their identities were confused. Uba b'nashal zu. And now the son that's known, so he came, v'nasa imu shal zeh, u b'nashal zu, nasa imu shal zeh. So the son of, of, of one went and married the other mother and the other, and the other son married the other mother. They're allowed to marry one another. So, so each one went and married the mother of the other one. So what happens now? And then, umesu beloi bonim, and they passed away without any children. So now we don't know who their brothers are. Who's going to do the, who's going to do the, the yibm over here? So, So therefore, each brother is going to have to do chalitza for both of them, because you don't know which one is your brother and which one is, is the son of your mother. And, 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 and therefore, there's no chalitza. So you're going to have to do chalitza for both of them. So, Nimtzad comes out, that each one of these brothers here is going to have to do chalitza for both of these women, and you're doing chalitza also for a woman that could be a mother. Yeah, so this is a case where because of a suffix, you're ending up doing chalitza for your mother. La chaysim is suffix. How does it come to be a case where a person has to do chalitza for a sister because of a suffix? Okay, so we have a similar thing. Kaitzat, how does this happen? Imoi v'isha acheres, a person's mother. And another woman, she yoldu shteine keves b'machba. So they gave birth to two girls. And these two girls got confused. Their identities were confused. And now, uvo achayen shaloi ma'isa ha'eim. So now these two girls also have brothers that they, they, they share the same father. They share the same, the same mother, sorry. These two girls have, again, brothers that share the same mother. But now, uvo achayen the brothers of their brother that does not share the same mother, but they share the same father came, Venosim, and got married to them. Again, you got the case of here. So you have two girls that are sisters, and they're confused. We don't know who these girls are, who their mother is. And they have brothers that share the same mother. And then those brothers have brothers that only share the same father. So those bro- their brothers are not related to these girls. They can go ahead and marry these girls, and they got married to them. 
Okay. And then they died without any children. So now you have to do the mitzvah of chalitza or yibum. So what happens? So now the brother has to come and do chalitza, and, he's, and you're going to do, you're gonna have to do chalitza for both of them. <coughs> so nimza chalitz la chalitza misafik. It comes out that you're doing chalitza for someone that might be a sister. So now, as, as Rashi explains over here, we know exactly who the brother is. The suffolk over here is not who the brother is. The suffolk over here is who the sister is because it's the girls that got confused. But the brother that's doing chalitza for his brother's wife, so he's doing chalitza for someone that might be his sister. It's, it's, it's not sure. So you don't have to have both of them doing chalitza for, for both of the women because we know exactly who the brother is. But you're ending up doing chalitza for someone that might be his sister. That's, so, I mean, the Lashon of the Gemara, Rashi says, is not so clear according to this Pshat, because it says, Yechalitz L'shteyem, but it doesn't literally mean that you have to do Chalitza for both, because in this case, you know exactly who your brother is. Rashi has another Pshat, uh, based on the Tesefta, but we're going to stick to the Pshat and the Lashon of the Gemara here. Okay, the last case, the Braise said, L'bitoi M'safek Ketzat, how is it possible that you have to do Chalitza for someone that might be your daughter? So it's as follows. You have your wife and another woman. They gave birth to two girls in hiding and the identities got confused. And now and now their brothers. So again, it doesn't mean their brothers, but it means their brother's brother. In other words, they a brother that only shares the same father but doesn't share the same mother came and and married one of these girls. And you, so now you don't know these the girls that they married. It's it's unclear who who is their brother. And now they passed away without any children. It comes out that each one is going to have to do chalitza for his brother, and he's doing chalitza for someone for a woman that misafik might be his daughter. So this is the case where it comes out that you do chalitza for for a bas misafik. Tanya Hoy Rab Meir Rab Meir said, Ishvi Isha. So here is another interesting thing, which is a pretty simple case here. This is without any mixtures. So you could have a man and a woman, sometimes they can give birth to five children, and these five children are each like from five different nations, meaning each child has a completely different status. How is that? Keitzad. Yisrael Shalaka Chavid Vishivchaminashok. Ayid buys a, a, a slave and a maidservant from, from the marketplace. We're talking about an Eved and a Shifcha Kananis. So he buys them and he wasn't yet, usually what happens when you buy an Eved and a Shifcha? You have to table them, they sort of become half Yidin, right? But over here he bought them as an Eved and a Shifcha Menashuk before he was tabled them or anything. They're still Goyim. And now Lehan, Shnei Banim. Now this Eved and Shifcha, they were married before and they already had two children from before. Man, one of them, one of their children became a ger. So what happens? So nimtza. So now it comes out that this husband and wife, so they have echad ger, echad They have one child that's a that's a ger. He was megayer, and they have another child that was not acquired along with them when they became avodim. So this husband and wife were acquired as a, as a, as a slave and maidservant, but that, that that son that's a guy was not acquired along with them. So he's a guy. So they have two children, one's a girl and one's a guy. Now he'd bill on the shame avdus. Now this person that acquired them was tevil this eved and shifchot for for the purpose of avdus, and which means that now the chayv and mitzvahs to some extent, and the nistke kuzel and they had relations with one another, and now they gave birth to another child. So now harek kan ger voivikechavim veeved. They have one son that's a girl, another son that's still a full guy, and they have now a son that was born that's an eved. Now what happened? Shichrer es ha-shifcha uva aleha ha-eved. So now this shifcha was freed. The eved, the slave, was not freed. The husband was not freed, but the wife was freed. So she's a full yid. And the eved is still an eved kanani. And they again had relations with one another. So this is basically relations between a woman that's now a yid with this eved that's still an eved kanani. So harekan. So what happened to this son that's born? So the Tana the Brayser says that this son that's born is going to be a mamzer. So now you have a ger, an eved kechavim, and an eved, and a mamzer, because a yid had a relationship with an eved. So according to the Tana of this Brayser, the kedushin doesn't take effect. So the child that's born is a mamzer. So we have four different kinds of children here. And then what happened? Shichrer shneim. Now he freed the husband as well. 
the Isi and Zelazan, they married one another. So now, when this husband and wife get married and have a bird, they have a child. So these are regular Yid. So Harei Kanker, Eve Kechavim, Eved, and Mamze, and Yisrael. The last child that's born is a regular Kosher Yid. So this is two parents that have five children. And each one of these children is from a different nation, so to speak. It's a totally, totally different status. So the Gemara says, okay, it's a very nice case, but what's the Chiddush here? My Kamash Malon, what's the Chiddush that this Braise teaches me? Says the Gemara, the Chiddush is regarding the case of Mamzer. Oivid Kechavim Ve'eved, Abal, Bas Yisrael, the Chiddush is that a Goy or an Eved that has a relationship with a Bas Yisrael, Havlad Mamzer, the child will be a Mamzer. We had a Sugi earlier in the Masechta regarding who's a Mamzer and who's not a Mamzer. According to many opinions, in such a case, you're not a Mamzer. But here, the Tana of this Braisa holds that because the Kiddushan didn't take effect, the child that's born between a Yid and a Goy will be a Mamzer. That was the Chiddush here. Tana Rabbanon, another interesting case you have. Yesh Meicher Es Aviv, there could be a situation where a person is selling his father, and for what purpose? Lahagbais Imaik Subasa. In order to use the value of his, the money that he gets for selling his father, to be able to give his, money, his mother, that is, the money for her Ksuba. How could such a thing happen? Ketzat, so how does this happen? Yisrael Lakach Eved Vishifcha Minashok. A Yid acquires an Eved and a Shifcha from the marketplace. Velahem Ben. And they had a son. Now that son was not acquired along with them. That son is, is the son of, of, of this shifcha that was the, remains a free person. It was never bought. Now this master went and freed his maidservant. And then also he, he got married to his shifcha. He freed her. She became a yid and he married her. And then what happens? He wants to give his wife a gift. So what does he do? He goes and he writes off all of his possessions, all of his assets to her son. Now her son is a guy. He, he, his, her son was, 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 was never acquired. He, he's still a guy, but he writes, he, this, he writes off all of his assets to the son. That includes also all of his avadim that he owns. Now one of the, the people that he owns as an Eved is his own father. His own father that was bought as a slave is one of the assets that was now sold off or given as a gift to the son. So now what happens if this person will pass away and now his mother wants to collect her ksube, so nimtzazeh meicheres aviv is possible that in order to be able to pay his mother the ksube, so this person might go and sell his father, which is one of the assets that he got, lahag to give for the mother the ksube money that she has to get. So that's his case. So again, the Gemara asks, my kamash it's a, it's a, huh? What does he have to sell the father for? Because he wants to pay his money, his mother, the ksuba, after the, after the, her husband passed away. So his mother has to get the ksuba. So the, one of the ways she can get the ksuba is by, 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 by this, the son selling one of the assets that are meshubit to the ksuba. Uh, one of those, the, the assets are, are, are subjugated to that ksuba. So he sells the father to be able to pay off the ksuba. So it's a cute case, but what's the Chiddush here? My Kamash Mulan, what's the Chiddush? It says the Gemara, Kula Rab Meiri, the previous Braise that was said clearly that it was Rab Meir, and this Braise as well, it's all Rab Meir speaking, and what Rab Meir is saying is, his opinion is, Va'avda Metaltali, an Eved has a halacha of a possession that's Metaltali, it's a movable object, like an Eved walks around. The Chiddush of Rab Meir's opinion is that even Metaltali are also Meshubid, which that there's a lean on even metaltalin to be collected for the ksuba money. That's a chiddush. I mean, other opinions say that you could only collect from properties, real estate. That's the only thing you could use for a ksuba, not movable items, because a woman doesn't rely on movable items that are, that are here today and are gone tomorrow. But Rabbi Meir's opinion is that even from metaltalin you could collect ksuba. Vibay same, or you could say the chiddush here is hakamash mulan. The chiddush here is that avda kemekarkoi dami. That an Eved, a human being, an Eved, has the status of a piece of karka. Just like a piece of karka is very reliable, and that's what a woman usually collects her ksuba from. So a Eved is not like a regular movable item that moves around from one place to another. A human being <coughs> is, is easier to locate and rely upon to collect your ksuba from there than a metaltal. And therefore, that's chidashar you could collect from the Eved. Zakta Mishneh ha'isha shenis arev vlada bevlad kalosa. You have a woman and her child, her son, was confused with the son of her daughter-in-law. Okay, so now they, these two, now what happened? Higdilu, these two sons here, you don't know who's who. Higdilu, they became older. These ones that their identity is confused got older. 
the Nasu Noshim, and they both got married to Mesu, and then they passed away without any children. So what happens? If you want to do Chalitza or Yibim for them, how do you do this? So B'nai Akala, so the sons of the daughter-in-law, in other words, they're, they're the brothers that are the sons from the daughter-in-law, so who are they going to do Chalitza for? Chalitzin, V'loi Miyavmin, they do Chalitza and they cannot do Yibum. Why? Because the person that they're doing Chalitza for this woman, so this could be the brother's wife, so then they have the mitzvah of Yibum, but it could also be Safik Eishes Achiyaviv. It could also be the wife of their father's brother. Right? So, so therefore, that's an erva. So, so there's no option of doing Yibum here. So they could only do Chalitza. B'nei Azekeina, however, the sons of the elder woman, so for them, Oy Chalitzin, Oy Miyavim. They actually have an option to either do Chalitza or Yibum. Why? Because this woman that they're doing chalitza for, what's the suffix here for them? Shesafik, eishesachiv. This might be their brother's wife. So then you have the mitzvah of yibum. But also it could be the eishes benachiv. It could be that it's the wife of benachiv of their <coughs> the, the, the their brother's uh, son. And over here, there's, there's no there's no issa to marry your brother's son. It's the wife. That, that's a niece. There's, there's no issa to marry her. So therefore, after chalitza is done, so they can go ahead and do yibum. Now, what happens if Mesu Hakshedim, before the case that we spoke about here in the Mishnah was that one of these two, that their identity is unclear, passed away. And now the other brothers, that they know who they are, so what do they do? But now what happens if the reverse happened? Hakshedim, Kshedim meaning the one that it's known, it's known who they are, they passed away. And now the brothers, that their identities are unknown, they want to go and do the mitzvah of Yibam. What could they do? So hataruva is so meisak shedim. So again, hataruva is levnei azekena cholzin v'loy miyavmin. So now, from from these brothers that are that is a, there's a confusion over here. So for the bnei azekena, for the wives of the elder woman, so cholzin v'loy miyavmin, they can do chalitza and not yibum. Why? What's the suffix for them? Shu suffix eshesachiv because this woman might be their brother's wife. So then they can do yibum, but also it could be the eshesachiyaviv. It could also be the wife of their father's brother, and that's an erva. Levnei kala, however, for the wife of the sons of the kala, so echad chaylitz ve'echad miyavim. So one will do chalitza, and the other one will do yibum. Because once one does chalitza, so for the other one, it's not going to be an iser anymore. Now the Gemara, go, the Mishnah that is, goes into another case, where you have a confusion of the identity, which is not related to the mitzvah of yibum. And here it's related to the mitzvah of a kayan of eating truma. You have a kehenes, and her child got mixed with the child of her maidservant. So basically, the child that was born over here, there's a suffolk who this child is. Either the child is a kayan, or the child is an evet. So what's the halacha? So this child is allowed to eat trume. Why? So as Rashi says, the halacha is, a kayan eats trume. And the Eved of a Kayin also eats Trumah. So, so either way, he can eat Trumah. They get one portion when they go down to the pile, when they collect Trumah, they get one portion. The Gemara will explain that. And the Einan Metamen Lemesin. So not, these two people, because he might be a Kayin, he's not allowed to be Metamen to a dead person. None of, they can't get married to a woman, whether it's someone that's kosher for a kayin, and and you can't get married to someone which is possible, meaning someone that usually can get married only to a, uh, to, uh, to a eved. They can't get married to a shifcha that usually can marry eved, because it's a safik, you might be a kayin. These two individuals, that it's a safik, who's the kayin and who's the eved, they got older. And now the, the father that owned the Evet passed away. And now they each gave a document of, uh, uh, to free one another. Each one might be the Evet and the other one is the kind that owns the Evet. So they gave a document to free one another. So what happens now? It's still a suffix, but now the suffix changes. Before the suffix was one is a kayin and one is an Evet. But now if they freed one another, misafik, they each one freed one another. So one is a kayin. And one is a Yisrael. So what happens now? So they can marry a woman that is kosher to get married to a Kayin. 
So if, if, if either one is a Kayan, it'll be kosher. There's, there's no evidence amongst them. So one of them is a Yisra, one of them is a Kayan. So you just marry a, a woman that's kosher to a Kayan. They still can't get Tommy to a maze because one of them is a Kayan. If they did get Tommy, they don't get Malchus because you don't know if he did it Isra or not. Now that there's a suffix that one of them might be a Yisrael, not the Evid of a Kayan, so none of them could eat Trumah. And if they ate from it, they don't have to pay back to the Kayan, the principal, and a fifth, because he can say, maybe I'm a Kayan. How can you take money out of me? They don't get a portion of the Trumah when they go down to the pile, because maybe you're a Yisrael. How could you, how could you go and collect Trumah? Now what happens with their own produce that they have to give Trumah from? So they have to sell the Trumah that they have. However, the money that they get for selling this belongs to them. So Rashi explains, they can't eat the truma that they separate for themselves because maybe you're a Yisrael. So you're going to have to sell it to a Kain. But at the same time though, the money you can keep, why could you keep the money? Because the Klal always is, Maybe I'm the Kain. So how could you take the money from me? So the money I can keep, but the actual truma they can't eat, so they have to sell it to a Kain. And the Einan Chayelkim Bekatshi and Mikdash, they don't get a portion in the Kachim and the Besam Mikdash. Rashi says that this would refer to usually a Kainim get all the hides of the animals in the Besam Mikdash. The Kainim got very rich from this. There was a lot of hides from the animals that they took. So they, they cannot get from the hide from the animals in the Besam Mikdash. And also the Einan Chayelkim Bekatshi. Different kachim that usually belong to a kayin, they do not get. So Rashi has two pshatim. The, the second pshat that Rashi accepts here and says is a mashal a bechayr that usually goes to the kayin. There's other kinds of kachim called a chayrem that usually goes to the kayin. They don't get. And the aim might see in shalahem yideim. At the same time, though, what's if one of these two individuals has an animal which is a bechayr? You can't take it away from them to give to the kayin. He can say, maybe I'm the kayin, so I can keep it. And also, pturin min azrayam, and al-chayayim, and akeva. This is Allah by every animal that you have as chulin. So there's a certain section of the animal that you have to give to the kayin. The, the, the cheek, and the, or the, 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 the front legs, and so on. Different sections you have to give to the kayin. They're potter to give it from the kayin. U now what do you do with their b'chayr? You can't give it to the kayin, but at the same time, he can't eat the b'chayr for himself. A b'chayr, which, which is a tam, which is not a balmum, has to be brought as a carbon, and only the kayin can eat it. So what does he do with his b'chayr? Yehei let this b'chayr graze out in the field, achi yistav, until he gets a mum. What happens when a b'chayr gets a mum? Now, anyone could shecht it and anyone could eat it. So then even if he's not a kain, he could also eat it. V'naisnen alav, chumri kain and chumri yisraelim. These two individuals, because it's a suffix, so he has to have all the chumris of a kain and the chumris of a yisrael. What chumris the mission is referring to, the Gemara will say. So the, the Gemara goes back to the first case of the Mishnah where it said Meisuak Shein and Vachulu, the ones that were kosher passed away. So the Gemara here says, why are we calling them Shein? El Hanach Mishum Di Arav Luhu. You had over here two brothers. You had the brothers that their identities were confused, and you had the brothers that their identities are known. So the Gemara says El Hanach Mishum Di Arav. Those that their identities were confused, Luhu Havalu Psulin. They're called Pasul. Why are we calling these kosher and these pasul? They're all kosher. These their identities are known and these their identities are not known. Amar Rav Papa, you're right, Eime o Meisu Havadon. Don't say Meisu Akshayim, but Vadon. There are those that their identities are known and those that their identities are not known. And then it said, Lebnea Kala Echot Chaylitz, for the sons of the Kala. So first you do Chalitza and then after Chalitza you do Yibum. So the Gemara explains, similar to what we learned before, Tafke Mechlatz, Vahada Yivumi, first you have to have Chalitza done and then you could do Yibum, but not the, in the, the reverse. Of Yivumi Bereisha Loi, to go ahead and do Yibum first, you can't. The, the Kapaga Biyavam Olashuk, possibly, even if this is not your brother's wife, but could be that this is you, you're marrying someone that was supposed to do Yibum without doing Chalitza first. So therefore, you, can, you have to do first chalitza. Then it said, Kayhenes shenis arav when you have this confusion between the kayin and the eved of a kayin, so they can both eat trume, but then it said, when they go down to the gairen to, to collect their trume, so the lashon of the Mishnah was that they get just one portion. They don't get two portions for both of these kayin. And why? Because only one of them is a kayin. So they get only chalik echot. So the Gemara asks them, there's Chelek Echot, said in the Mishnah, they only get one portion, Pshita, obviously, there's only one Kayin here. The other one is only an Evet of a Kayin. Why should he get a second portion? Answers the Gemara, Eime, read the Mishnah as follows. Chelek Ke Echot. What this mean, it means is, they both get one portion when they come together. 
Meaning, if only one of them is going to come to collect his truma, he's not going to get. Which means even though an Eved of a Kayin is allowed to eat truma, but an Eved of a Kayin cannot go alone to, connect, to collect the truma for his master, which is a Kayin. If he wants to collect the, the truma, he's going to have to go together with his master. So both of them have to come together to collect the truma. That's what it meant. So the Gemara here says, Tnan, command Oma. So we learned in our Mishnah, like the opinion that says, En Cholkin Truma Levit. That even though Evid is allowed to eat truma, but he can't come and collect that truma for his master. Unless his master is there with him. So the Tanya, we learned in Abrai some Achleikas about this. So first opinion here is, You don't give truma for an Evid, unless his master is there with him. Divri Rabbi Yehuda, that's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, The, the Evid could come and say, If I am a Kayin, So in this case that we're speaking about, if there's a Suffolk, so he comes and says, listen, if I am a Kayin, so t'nuli bishvalatzmi, give me the truma because I'm a Kayin. Then Evet Kayin, and even if I'm not the Kayin, even if I'm the Evet of the Kayin, so t'nuli bishvul rabbi, give me the truma for my master. So the, 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 this, uh, that's the machloikis over here. According to Rabbi Yaisi, you could give the master, sorry, the Evet that is, the truma without his master present. So our Mishnah is saying like Rabbi Yehuda, that you can't give the Evet without the master present. So the Gemara now explains the reason for their machloikis. The Mekayim Eishal Rabbi Yehuda, in the place where Rabbi Yehuda lived, Hoyumaylin mitrume liyuchsin, they would elevate the status of this person to consider him a Kayin, to his lineage, that he's a Kayin, based on this, that you know that he collected truma. If you see an individual that came and collected truma, they would use that as proof that he's a Kayin. So therefore, they'd never want, they'd never gave truma to an Eved. Because then they're going to elevate his status to being a Kayin. So therefore, they only gave truma to the Kayin. And if the Eved comes, his master, the Kayin, is going to have to come as well. The Mekayim HaShor Rabbi Yaisi, however, in the place of Rabbi Yaisi, Lehoya Maile Metrum Leyuchsen, they would never base a proof on the fact that this person is a Kayan because he went and, and collected the Truma. So therefore, even if he's an Eved and he collects the Truma for his master, there's nothing to be concerned about. They're not going to elevate his status to being a Kayan. Tanya will learn in the Braise, Amr Abu Lazar Bar Tzadik. Abu Lazar Bar Tzadik said, My entire lifetime, I never said testimony besides one time. And what happened? It was regarding such a kind of case that he saw a person that was collecting truma. So he came and said, Eidos, that he's collecting truma and that he's a Kayan. To, to, to say his Yichus, that he's a Kayan. And the Hello, Eved Lukohona, Alpi. And because of this, they elevated the status of, a, of this Eved. He was really an Eved and he was collecting truma. And they elevated his status to be a Kayan based on my Eidos. So the Gemara asks him this, could it be that, he, that such a mistake happened based on his Eidos? Helu Sokadaitach, they elevated this status, did this ever to be a Kayan? Now we know, Hashta, Behemton Shok Sadikim, when it comes to an animal of a Tzadik, Ena Kadosh Baruch Hu Mevi Takol Al Yodan. The Abishad does not allow something bad to happen with the animal of a Tzadik to do an Aveda. Tzadikim Atzmon Le Kol Shekein, a Tzadik himself, most definitely the Abishad will not allow such a terrible thing happen that a person like Rabbi Lazar Bar Tzadik should say Eidos and they should turn an Eved into a Kayan. That's the Gemara's question. Taisus over here erases this entire question of the Gemara. Taisus says this concept that the Eivisha does not allow a tzaddik to do an Aveda is only when it comes to eating food, <coughs> not been negated to any other Aveda. So therefore Taisus says over here, the fact that his aid has caused an Eved to become a Kayan is not something that the Eivisha, so to speak, protects a tzaddik from, and therefore Taisus erases this whole thing. Either way, the Gemara answers and says, They were going to, they wanted to elevate the status of this Eved based on my Eidos, but then they didn't do so. Why not? He saw this Eved in the place of Rabbi Yaisi. What happened in the place of Rabbi Yaisi? Over there, by Rabbi Yaisi, they would usually elevate the status of an Eved. So he saw it in the place of Rabbi Yaisi. But then, the place where he said the Eidos was in the place of Rabbi Yehuda. So therefore, in the place of Rabbi Yehuda, you can't elevate the status of this Eved. So therefore, huh? Again, I said it wrong. Oh, okay, so again, and the, he, saw, he saw this Eved collecting the Trume in the place of Rabbi Yaisi, and he went and he said Eidos in the place of Rabbi Yehuda. So therefore they thought that they could elevate the status of this, uh, of this person to be a Kayin. But the truth is, the fact that they saw him going and collecting the Trume over there in the place of Rabbi Yaisi, it wasn't, it wasn't a Raya. Because according to Rabbi Yaisi, huh? they, they would not elevate the status of him to be a Kayin. Right, exactly.
Okay, we'll stop over here. Correct.